Hey guys, welcome back to a holiday video. Today, we are gonna be covering a very special topic. We're gonna talk about how the System76 Pop! OS Cosmic DE is coming along. We have December updates in front of us here today, as you can see, and we're gonna go diving right in. Man, I remember being very excited about Cosmic. This was gonna be epic. Now, they're working on it for more than a year, and I believe that they are going to deliver. Let's check some of the things out that are new this time along. So first we have right-clicking a Windows title bar provides the options to move, resize, stack, or tile, and take a screenshot of the window. This is very handy. I was preparing a guide for OBS audio settings for my microphone, and I will create a video about that if you're interested. So let's open this image in a new tab. Let's go through what it is. Here we can see this is probably G-Edit. You have maximize, float window, take a screenshot, move, resize, move to previous workspace, move to next workspace, create window stack, and close. I like that they have the shortcuts mentioned here as well, and I absolutely appreciate these settings, these options in the context menu. This looks pretty cool. Let's move on. You also have a Cosmic Text Editor. So the text editor was expanded upon even more this month. Now you can double click to highlight a word and triple click to highlight the whole line. Pretty usual expected behavior, but very happy to see that this has been implemented. Plus the spacing in the tree view was reduced for easy navigating. We have also added two major features, search projects and Git integration. Very cool. Let's open up these two images. Let's check them out one by one. Okay, so we have file edit view. We have a beautiful tree-like structure. The entire, the main body of the text editor, I believe is how you would say it. And you also have a search bar, uh, whatever you were searching for. You can close the panel, very uh, handy button. And you also have minimize, maximize, and close buttons. And they look really good. They're minimalistic and they look really good. That's all I can say. Now, moving on to the next one, you have Git integration. Now you can view the current Git status and track changes with diffs. The diffs feature marks deletion in red and additions in green. Pretty standard a feature if you've used something like GitHub or Bitbucket. So you don't have to go over to a heavy IDE if you're editing something simple in a text editor. This would show up right here and it would make it so much more simpler when you're comparing uh, changes before you want to commit them or uh, when you're checking past comments, uh, past commits, this would be really handy. You also get multi-monitor improvements. So whilst there's already a shortcut for moving individual windows to another display, I think that we saw the shortcut up here with move to previous workspace or move to next workspace. These two were the ones that, that's being talked about in here. And so when a shortcut is used to move from the current display to the next or the previous display, it's now easier for the user to tell which display that will be, thanks to new logic. This system determines this output based on pre-positioning all connected displays, whereas previously this was determined by the order in which the displays was connected. That's pretty good. If you have monitor one on the left, two in the middle, three at the right, it'll know where the monitors were placed. But earlier, what used to happen is maybe, I don't know, maybe one was at the right, two on the left, and uh, three in the center, so depending on the order in which the monitors were connected from your computer. Obviously, this is not that much of a deal if you're using a laptop with a primary monitor. But again, if you have windows, I mean, monitors to the left and right, that would be, that would cause issues, which now no longer would be. So they have, I guess, a GitHub repository for where they go into a lot more detailed behavior of how this works. Uh, you can see display workspace one, then display two workspace one, and then you can change. And they have a whole thing mentioned over here. If you want to go through these, I'll put the link in the description and please feel free to go through them. Furthermore, code was added for migrate for Windows to migrate between displays based on connectivity. When a display is disconnected, the window will migrate to a connected display. This is such a lifesaver. Honestly, for people working with multi-monitors, this would be so important. You, do, you just don't lose your windows or they just don't get minimized, right? They open up as they were in another monitor. 
that is so helpful when you're, uh, I don't know, let's say you are disconnecting your laptop from the monitors before going to the office, or maybe you just come home from office and you already had the settings done and you just wanna, uh, I don't know, maybe you use a multi-monitor setup at your office, you just come back home and you wanna replicate that. You don't have to go through the entire setup. You just plug in your uh, laptop through your HDMI or I don't know, uh, USB 4 or whatever, and you have all the windows neatly arranged for you to work on. No wasting time, you get, a, you get to fully focus on productivity. You also have bugs surrounding window focus and multi-monitor setups and XFL and applications. For wallpaper settings, we have the settings panel is now fully implemented. The finishing touches include custom wallpaper colors and images, plus the ability to change the active background image folder. That's pretty good because what I do is I like to create a folder called wallpapers and I put all my favorite images in there for it to uh, for it to be applied to the wallpaper. I do this both in Windows and Mac OS and I would love for Pop OS to have this feature as well. Multi-window support. A rebase, a rebase of our version of the Iced Toolkit added support for opening multiple windows of the same application while this support was already Present for shell apps such as settings, this support has been expanded to include libcosmic applications like Cosmic's text editor that use a cross-platform Winit backend. So basically you can uh, have multiple windows for the same app and the app list has been enhanced and they have included more apps that use the libcosmic uh, library for it to support multi-window applications. Bluetooth and MPRIS. I'm not sure what exactly MPRIS is, but let's go over it. So the Bluetooth applet now reflects its status as correctly being on or off more reliably. Okay, so this is a bug squash and when media multi multiple media players are used, such as when a user switches from a YouTube video in the browser to their playlist in Spotify, we've ensured that MPRIS now switches over to the active media player. So I guess it would be an icon uh, at the top right corner. Uh, I mean, whatever media you're playing, for example, if you're playing a video in a browser and uh, you move over to, I don't know, from maybe from YouTube to YouTube Music, it would correctly show up. This is available in other, I, uh, in other DEs such as Linux Mint. It's uh, at the bottom right corner instead of being at the top because they use a status bar. High resolution scroll events. The so support was added to Cosmic's Compositor and Smithy for scrolling in smaller increments with a compatible mouse. So that's pretty good. Single instance support. We've expanded single instance application support to both the launcher and the application library with single instance application support. If an application is already called upon while open, it will navigate to the requested page uh, rather than open that page in a new window. So this is pretty good because oftentimes we forget that we opened something and then maybe we're gonna come back to it later. We just don't remember and we end up uh, trying to open that again. Give me back the old instance that I was working on because humans are faulty and don't open a new instance. That's pretty good. You also have a few updates for the LTS version of Pop! OS, uh, which is 22.04. And those are not really important to today's conversation. So that was it, guys. Thanks so much for watching and let's catch up in the next video. Peace.